Hello and welcome to the program. I am Shola Shiyeli. The body of senior advocates of Nigeria, Boson, did an unusual thing recently. For the first time, the host had a sitting Chief Justice of Nigeria. And the idea, amongst other things, was to put forward some of their concerns as it affects the judiciary, as well as to hear from the CJN how he hopes to address some of these concerns. So on Saturday, the 22nd of October, they hosted the CJN, Justice Olukayo de Ariwola, to a dinner in Lagos. The dinner, organized by the body of senior advocates of Nigeria, Bosan, was attended by members of the executive, the legislature, and of course, the judiciary. Not less than 80 senior advocates were also in attendance. It's an opportunity to celebrate Justice Olukayo de Ariwola on his appointment as substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria about three months after he was first sworn in in an acting capacity. The CJN was also recently conferred with the National Award of the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, GCON. The Secretary of Bosan, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Olumide Shofora, set the tone for the dinner with these opening remarks. It was therefore the decision of the dinner subcommittee to hold this reception in honor of our new Chief Justice of Nigeria, Mr. Justice Olika Ariwala, GCON, as well as provide an opportunity for our body to present certain issues which have been agitating the minds of our members to a distinguished honoree, who is the head of the judiciary in this country, with a view to enhancing the administration of justice and observing the, the rule of law. Some of these issues are, one, why has the Supreme Court not had its full complement of 22 justices, including the Chief Justice, as is provided for in the 1999 Constitution? There are, there are some years, there were some years in the recent past that a number of justices sitting at the court fell to as low as 13 Without, appoint, without additional appointments being made for quite some time. Two, why have appointments to the Supreme Court bench excluded members of the body of senior advocates of Nigeria and even the academia, considering that some of the best justices that ever sat in the Supreme Court, for example, Honorable Justice Augustine Nnamani and Honorable Justice Teslim Olawale Elias, both of blessed memory, were from our body and the academia respectively. Three, we are also concerned about the conflicting decisions of the Supreme Court in recent years, which has made it difficult for the lower courts to observe the rule of law, the rule or principle of stare decisis. The chairman of the event is the matriarch of the bar and first female senior advocate of Nigeria, Chief Folake Shulanke. She is unavoidably absent and has sent her apologies and speech to the chairman of the body of benchers, Chief Wole Olani Pekun who goes on to read same to the guardian. His Lordship has resumed office of the prestigious position as CJ during the turbulence now raging in the nation, even at the Supreme Court, when the justices had to write a letter to the former CJN, Honorable Justice Tanko Mohammed, concerning the disaffection within the APS court. Your Lordship was a signatory to that unprecedented letter which was leaked to the media. Thus, your lordship, with all due respect, knows about the causes of disaffection analyzing the letter. So firstly, mean to pray that God will empower and direct your lordship to find solutions to the daunting problems. Dio Bulenti. It is clear that the problems which every one of us, both on the bench and at the bar, should now embark on it's a crusade to restore the golden age of our learned profession. It is my humble opinion that if every one of us in corruption is corruption free, then the whole profession will be corruption free. Thus, everyone should engage in self introspection, self examination, self analysis, and self determination to exterminate the hydro headed, the hydro headed monster of corruption. All I can say now is that we must pray that your lordship will succeed in leading the profession to engage in a crusade to restore the golden age of the profession when judges and lawyers enjoyed higher respect of the populace. There is a need to establish trust and confidence in our learned profession. It is also my prayer that God will inspire and help the Honorable CJN to restore honor dignity and integrity in our legal system. 
For some time now, there has been complaints as regards the independence of the judiciary, and the body of senior advocates took the opportunity to bear their minds on this issue. It's very unfortunate, my lord, that the Supreme Court lost a major opportunity when a case was presented before it about how the judiciary should assert its own independence in an extremely, with all due respect, extremely poor decision. The Supreme Court lost the opportunity to set out the parameters for its funding. So I hope that this new executive judicial rapprochement will bear fruit because our judges have long suffered. The judges' salaries are so poor. And I said it to your lordship that good chambers in this country pay more than what justices of the Supreme Court earn to new intakes in their chambers. And I have said it over and over, and I told Mr. President that the take-home pay of a justice of the Supreme Court is 250,000 Naira a month. Yet you expect something good. I'm not saying they are not doing anything good. They are doing much. But what do we expect from them under these very, very disturbing circumstances? Very brutal, very brutish, very harrowing. The governor of Lagos, Babajide Songolu, also encouraged the body of senior advocates to continue to ensure the rule of law in the country. You are all professionals. You are all outstanding Nigerians, outstanding individuals of no small mates in our country. And I want to admonish you as well and say to you that uh, the ordinary citizens too are watching. We believe that indeed the common man has no place to go other than to believe in your profession and in expectation that is anyhow you take us that we will land. Even as a, as a governor, there are things that I cannot do. There are decisions that I cannot take alone. There are pronouncements that I cannot make just because the law does not allow me and my advisors have said you cannot do that. When the honoree took the podium, he addressed some of the issues earlier raised and gave a solemn promise to leave behind a success trail that the next generation can emulate. As for what happened in the Supreme Court a couple of months ago, which had kept recording, there was no petition and there was no letter at all written to or against anybody. There were 15 justices of the Supreme Court then, and if 14 behind the then Chief Justice came up with a write-up and personally presented this to the number one, that cannot be said to be a petition. It was an internal memo. It was a memo prepared by justices taken and presented to our brother, the Chief Justice. And we reminded his Lordship that this paper contained what we had either individually or in groups or collectively come to discuss with his Lordship. This was not written or typed by any secretary of the Supreme Court. One of us, a justice of Supreme Court, got it like dictation into the computer and no justice had a copy. It was read, written, corrected, and printed straight away. And we took it, described as memo, 
to the Honorable the Chief Justice of Nigeria. And that's why we say how it got to the press. You might want to say only God knows. But we later discovered from the tone of the response from the office of the then Chief Justice when the Justice of the Supreme Court were described as dancers nakedly at the market square. We discovered that no, somebody must have meant war and there was no need to fight. We were one and we remain one. And since then, we had moved forward. The 13 justices left in the court, we had agreed with this chief justice out of it to be in four committees to run the affairs of the Supreme Court together. Each of the justices behind me, number two, number three, number four, number five, we've all agreed to head four committees and two justices supporting as, you know, finance and accounts, litigation and aid services, administration, and welfare of justices and staff. So, justices are now running the affairs of the Supreme Court by themselves. It is our court. The administration and the staff are to support and assist justices, not to take over the running or the affairs of the court. So each of the justices of the Supreme Court now has a role to play in the administration of the court. I immediately summoned the chief registrar and told her, you might want to say, and warned her that this is our court. She was worried that his lordship started asking for all accounts. I said, give him all accounts, except you have something to hide. I want to assure you all, please, that the Justice of Supreme Court are one, and we shall remain one. <laughs> Our trouble, Lanet Bosan, is that out of 21 that the Constitution says must run the court, only 12 of us are there now, 12 a functioner. One of us is seriously indisposed for a couple of uh, months now. An attempt to bring in more justices, there's no fund, there's no money. If there's no money to buy mobility, to buy, if our brothers who, who join us in the Supreme Court two years ago, some are yet to be accommodated. Some are yet to be given the full compliments of their cars. How do you go ahead and bring in six more justices? And you now start to grumble. We should now be grumbling to say the government has failed. They said they don't have money. So please, you pardon us and we need your support. Busan particularly, we need you. You always think is the Busan and the Bar 
that need this court. No, we need the Bosan too. And please, there is no bench without the bar. There is no bench without the bar. Without the cooperation of the bar, the bench will fail. I believe you have assured us that we shall not fail you. It is only when you cooperate with us, you support us, that we shall move together and to great success.